Today we're going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution that I've never actually heard of before, so this is going to be a little bit of a unique experience. The distro is called Bodhi Linux, and I believe that's how you pronounce it, but it might be something different, I'm not actually sure. It's B-O-D-H-I, and most recently they released version 6.0 of the operating system, so it's been around for a while, and it's based on Ubuntu, and it looks like it's a very stable Linux distribution or at least that's what it's aiming to be. So we're gonna take a look at it today and uh, we'll install it in a virtual machine and see what it's all about. So let's go ahead and first take a look at the release info of version 6.0. So it says here that it is based on Ubuntu 20.04.2 LTS. This is the most recent LTS version of Ubuntu. Uh, it says our arc green theme underwent a major revamp now featuring an, an animated background so that should be interesting to see how that works out and updated splash screen and made numerous tweaks the login screen also now features an elegant slick greeter there's a new plymouth theme i don't know what that means but we'll have to check and see what that is the moksha desktop which is the desktop that they use environment has numerous improvements and a few new features added. In addition to all this, the Buddy team has tried to improve support for non-English languages, so that's good too. As a result, we now install by default the GNOME language tool. None of this would have been possible without the support of the Bodhi community and volunteer work of our small group of translators. So that's really cool. That's really nice. It's nice to see a Linux distribution that has a nice community surrounding it. Other notable changes since Bodhi 5.1 release includes re include replacing PC Man FM with a custom patched version of Thunar. Okay, so they've moved from PC Man FM to Thunar. Uh, I can see why they do that. PC Man, M PC Man FM is, um, it's a little heavy. I mean, it's not heavy as in resource intensive, but it can look a little heavy at least. At least that's my opinion. The version of Thunar now supports setting the background image of the, the Moksha alignment desktop. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking that this maybe that this also comes with Enlightenment, or maybe Moksha is based on Enlightenment? I'm not actually sure. Uh, in addition to patching Thunar, we also patched LeafPad and ePhoto. LeafPad is to fix the truncated file issue led to its removal from both Debian and the Ubuntu repositories. Okay, um, so lots of nice little fixes here if you've used this distribution in the past. So let's go ahead and uh, Look at their releases here. So they have a standard release, which is just the regular release. It has the normal small amount of apps that you'd get. The HWE release has a more recent kernel, I believe, and allows for better hardware support. And the App Pack release, which is what we're going to be trying today, I, this has a ton of extra apps. And if you're interested in knowing what the difference is, you can actually go through the, to their wiki and have them explain it to you. So Bodhi Linux standard is the platform standard for desktop and workstation computers. HWE has the hardware enablement built on top of standard for catching up with the newest hardware technologies. If your processor is capable of running 64-bit operating system and you want to receive further kernel updates and newer hardware support you should be using this release. And then the app hack one comes with a variety of additional themes, applications, and compared to the standard. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the, the virtual machine here. So let's go ahead and start this and we're gonna go ahead and install it in VirtualBox. So that's an interesting grub boot bootloader. Nice. Go ahead and hit try. So we get full screen right off the bat, which is good. Now this is based on Ubuntu, so you do get that consistent logo all the way through startup, which is nice. Okay, so we ch check our language here, hit next, and our keyboard. The, the interesting way this is this is laying out is uh, they have the, t the title up here, so you have to make sure you're paying attention to the whole screen. Okay. So I did see something move there in the background, so it is an animated background. Doesn't not that animated though? Okay, let's so let's go ahead and see what we got here. Let's go ahead and just install it. We'll take a look at the desktop after we've installed. What installer do we get? Do we get Ubiquity? Do we get something custom? 
we get ubiquity. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue here. This cursor is going to drive me absolutely bad. I don't know if you can see that, but that is pointing the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, make sure our keyboard is working here, which it is. Continue. We'll install, do this one here and not this one here. We'll do the updates afterwards. Continue. And let's see if we have any other options for, oh, we do have ZFS here, experimental still available. So that's nice. They haven't taken that out. We'll, we won't select it here, but uh, it is available if you want it, which is good. And uh, we'll go ahead and install now and then continue. And that's a good enough time, time zone. We'll type in our credentials. Okay. And our usual password and hit continue. And we're installing. Okay, well, so we'll see how long this takes. I'll cut away and come back when it's done. Okay, that took about seven minutes or so. So let's go ahead and uh, shut this virtual machine down. Now, if you were doing this, normally you could just hit restart now and remove your installation media, but because I'm in a virtual machine, I'm gonna have to shut down. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue testing, and then go down here and power off. That way I can remove the installation media from VirtualBox, which is already done. Sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. So let's go ahead and hit the start button up again here and see what the load times are like. Pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and enter our password. And we have a splash screen with a logo that's appearing to be a little bit off center. Uh, but that's okay. So if you click on the desktop, you get a menu. Very similar to what you would see in like Openbox, actually. Uh, it wouldn't actually surprise me at all if this was based on Openbox or something of the like. It reminds me quite a bit of like LX Cute, just a little bit. Um, maybe LXDE back in the day. Uh, I'm guessing that this is probably based on GTK and not cute. Uh, I will know more once I've opened up some applications. So here along the bottom we have the application launcher. We have the Chromium web browser. Interesting that they went with Chromium and not Firefox, but it's a choice. We have a term terminal which is terminology as the terminal. Um, never heard of actually heard of terminology before. Let's see if NeoFetch is installed. It is not. So let's go ahead and do an update. See how long this takes. Oh, that's because I didn't put apt there. Turns out if you spell things right and do things correctly, they usually work. If you don't do those things, they don't work. So there's actually quite a few updates here for this having been just released in the last week. Not as many as there could be, but there definitely is more than I expected there to be. That didn't take too long though. So let's go ahead and do sudo apt install neofetch. And then we'll clear this out and do neo fetch. Okay, so we don't have a custom logo here. This is just a Linux, that's just Tux. We got Bodhi 6.0.0. This is running the Enlightenment desktop environment, which is something I've actually never tried before. And this is the Muksha window manager. Again, it wouldn't surprise me if that's not based a little bit on OpenBox because it's very similar to OpenBox. The theme is Atawaita, and this is GTK3, so that's nice. Uh, the terminal is terminology. Again, not something I've ever used before. 
the font as Terminus ten, 10 Bold. Okay, and moving stuff around here, I don't see any screen tearing, which is always the first thing I check when I install something on hardware, but usually the VM is pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit of a flare there at the end, but it actually drags around pretty good. Very speedy. Open and closes really good. So that's a good start there. Let's so we're using the kernel 5.4, which is fairly old, but it's also the kernel that the LTS was released with, so not all that surprising. Uh, let's do free dash M. And we're using 218 megabytes of RAM. That is spectacular. So if you're gonna be looking for a distribution that is light on resources, th if the rest of this is any good, this might be something that you'd look into because 218 is probably the lowest that I've actually ever seen on an actual desktop environment. Uh, usually to get that, you have to be in some kind of window manager. So that's really good. Okay, let's go, and that's with a terminal open. So let's go ahead and close that. So on the desktop here, I don't see an animated background, but that might just be because I'm in a virtual machine. Sometimes the virtual machine and the video drivers don't actually allow animations and stuff to come through, so that's okay. Uh, we have some widgets up here. We have the clock. I don't see... Uh, we can move this. But it doesn't seem that you can actually drag and drop it somewhere else. That's a little bit interesting. We have our workspace switcher. This isn't yep, yeah, this is our workspace switcher. So if we open up a open up Thunar here. And switch between these, we'll see that we switch between workspaces, which is cool. Uh those icons though, whoa wow. Um Definitely unique. Definitely not something that I expect to see. Now, this is the weirdest Atawaita theme I've ever seen. This is not Atawaita uh, at all. So, they just probably cloned that and then completely rewrote it or something. I'm not sure. Uh, not a ton of stuff over here in the places pinned. Uh, so, that's not a big deal. What I'm not seeing here is a way to make this bigger. So, like, if I... Oh, there we go. It's just a different... Usually, the... When you go to the sides of a window, the cursor will be like a little arrow or something. This has like a, like a blinking dot or something. I don't know if you can actually see that on the screen, uh, but that's how you can change that. That's a little weird. Now, like I said, that's probably an enlightenment thing that I've just never seen before uh, because I've never actually used this before. But we can obviously make it full screen. Interestingly enough, the calendar and the clock thing stays on top. I'm assuming that's because I changed that. Let's uh, move to... Let's un un close that and see if that actually stays up. Yeah, there we go. Got rid of that. Okay. So that is their custom fork of Thunar. Surprisingly, if you maximize it, you can't unmaximize it by dragging from the title bar. You actually have to use the button. Okay, so that'd be a little bit of a quirk. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the programs that are installed out of the box, shall we? So remember, this is the app pack version. So this means there are extra applications than what you'd get in the standard version. So going to applications, we have them in categories, accessories, cherry tree, leaf pad, PyCom, calculate, and X archiver. Uh, these are going to be the preferences for enlightenment. Programming, we got Genie here, Education, LibreOffice, Math, which means we have LibreOffice installed. Uh, some games, we have Solitaire, Tux Racers here, and Frozen Bubble. That's probably going to be a bubble popper game. Uh, graphics, we have ePhoto, uh, GNU Image, so we have GIMP, which is here, uh, Image Magic, and LibreOffice Draw, Internet, Chromium, Discord is installed by default, FileZilla, Hex Chat, and Pigeon. Audacious for, for music, Kazam, Pulse Audio, Volume Control, and VLC. So, no extraneous, like, five or six different versions of a vid video or music player, which is good. Uh, LibreOffice and several system tools. we got GW here for doing uh, dev packages. 
bulk rename, which comes with Thunar. HTOP is installed by default, which is cool. Um, terminology is the terminal. Time shift is installed by, uh, by default as well. So that is really quite cool and not as jammed packed full of applications as I expected it to be. I expected there to be a ton of like extra packages. It'd be interesting to see what the standard one actually comes with. If this is this minimal, because I mean, I've seen quote unquote minimal installs with more than this. So if the standard one has less, it'd be interesting to see what those, the actual differences are. That might be something that I'll take a look at uh, later on. So what else do we have in this menu? We have Quick Launcher, which is in places. Take Screenshot, which is for in the menu, which is a little weird. About Operating System, which is where you can get help. About Body Linux, about the Moksha Desktop. Uh, which all we get is credits. Okay, so that doesn't actually, you know, that's pretty uh, useless, really. Um, one thing I did not see is like a, a app store or something. Did you see an app store? Update manager. Like I didn't see Synaptic or anything like that. Package install. I mean, that's not going to be it. Advanced Internet Collection. Oh, Synaptic is here. I just missed it. I didn't go up far enough. So here's Synaptic Packet Manager, and Bodhi does have its own app center. So, and but that's not an app center. That's just that's just a website, <laughs> and that's inconsistent. Did you notice that when we're on here to to when you hover over the corner to resize this, the icon was this weird uh, blinking thing. When you're on in Chromium, it uses the standard arrows. So that's quite inconsistent as well. Uh, so this is their app center. It's not an app. It's a website. So let's just see what we got here. So let's look at file managers. Let's just see what's Nautilus. Let's say if we want to install Nautilus. Install. And what is that going to open? Sure. I'm just curious. It's going to... probably going to be opening up the so that's how it goes about installing pro programs from the web basically so basically it downloads a, what I'm guessing is a dev package and then uses GW to actually install it that is uh, an interesting way of doing things it's definitely not something that I have seen before let's see what else they got here let's go to games see what they got for games so, say if I wanted to install Steam uh, Plan Linux, SuperTux, uh, Solitaire, Mines, and Gwelder. Uh, that's literally it. So no Steam there. So you'd have to install Steam from the Ubuntu repositories. Uh, okay. Moksha mo modules, forecasts. So these are, I'm assuming that it's going to be this thing here. So let's just say I wanted the forecast thing. Let's install that. Install this. Yes. It's already installed. Okay, so it doesn't actually tell you if you have it installed. You just, well, which is not surprising, so it's it's a website. Let's see here. Settings panel. So let's let's take a look at the settings here. We can go ahead and close this. I'm not that impressed with the app store, quote unquote app store. Uh, it's definitely the easy way of doing it, I guess. Okay, so let's see. Wallpaper open up that as a different window uh, and it says use theme wallpaper so you can actually would let's see what the application theme is and it does it doesn't it's not live updating so you actually have to go through and hit apply and that didn't actually make any change at all apply Let's choose Adawata and see what that applies. We know what that looks like. Okay. So that did, um, I mean, let's go ahead and open up Thunar and see if it actually changed. It did change. Okay, but it's not live. So you have to close apps and reopen them, which isn't surprising. That's, that's usually the way it happens with GTK apps. So that's not that surprising. Uh, let's just apply this one and see what that one looks like. 
Wow, okay. <laughs> That's an interesting thing, right? Okay. Uh, let's do that. I think the green one is the one that we get by default. No, it's dark, but I actually kind of like that one better. This, I bet you it's the arc version. Uh, let's see, which one do we have? So there are t quite a few themes here installed by default. Not really any that are... Oh, that was live. Okay. But the application theme one doesn't update live. So you can definitely tell that's a GTK2 theme. So we do... It, it starts off on Art Dark is where it starts off with probably the green version. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not judging anybody who likes these themes, but I don't care for them all that much at all. Arc is probably the best one. The rest of them have weird textures all over the place. So there's quite a few themes. Let's go ahead and go back to the settings here. Uh, let's see your theme. So Moksha Art Green, Moksha Art Dark, it's going to be, okay, so that changes the, the wallpaper as well with it. So these are a whole bunch of different themes. Let's go some, through some of these. Uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it said bling, so I should have, tr I should have trusted it. Wow, okay. Uh, let's try this one. This one doesn't look nearly as bad. Some of these things are out there. But there's a lot of them. This would definitely take some getting used to. Uh, this one is kind of very, like, Windows Vista-ish. Kind of. Alright, we're done with that. Let's go ahead and go up here back to the green one. Yeah. Well, we'll go to this one. Okay. So that's theme, colors. We can change individual colors. So this is basically how, like, XFCE does colors and stuff sometimes. Uh, so you can also change fonts, borders, transitions, which we won't be able to see because I'm in a virtual machine. Scaling and startup applications as well. So, although this is not startup applications, this is going to be like the splash screen. Okay, so there's quite a few of those to choose from as well. So, I've actually seen more stuff installed for themes and stuff than I with this app pack than I did actually see actually ec extra apps. So, you can choose favorite applications, bar, iBar applications, which is going to be probably the things that go down here at the bottom. Okay, uh, screen lock applications, restart applications, startup applications, things that start up go with the startup default applications, desktop environments. Start GNOME services, start KDM e services, only launch single instances. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what that would do. Let's see here. Um, virtual desktops and workspaces and stuff like that. Input and output. Windows, so this is going to be like window control, like where stuff spawns and stuff, Windows geometry, uh, probably being able to change where the buttons and stuff are, menus, menu settings, favorites applications, names, generic and stuff, so there's not a ton of app. Okay. So Interestingly enough, you can't resize that, so you can actually get everything on there all at once, but that's okay. More language settings, advanced environment variables, so like a, a GUI for setting environment variables, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I feel like like Sparky or MX had something similar to that. Let's see your files, so that's going to control places and stuff that would show up here, down here in the bottom, in the uh, application menu, and then launcher. Okay, so that's the settings. Did I 
I don't see anything here to like, control the resolution. Did you? Like, if I wanted to change the resolution, where would I where would I go? So that, would, that here would change when the screen times out, and the backlight, and the screen lock, and the virtual desktops. But I don't see anything for changing the actual di like display resolution. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter, but it's interesting to s that I missed it. Okay, so let's see. Other oh, other settings, gadgets, uh, background options, layers. This is going to be a gadget, but it doesn't s really tell you how you would go about, you know, adding a new one. What else we got? Settings, modules. Okay. So the. I wonder how you turn that on. Load. Okay, and then it's backlight load. And this stuff, it, it, you can actually see this down here at the bottom. This is the, the, the modules that go into the bar. System look. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff here that you can do, but it's all weird. But I've never used Enlightenment before, but I've seen it. Like, I've seen it, like, on... Dester Watch and you know blog Linux blogs and stuff like that, and I've always thought it was a little weird. And my experiences with it today are that it's a little weird. Uh, but that being said, Body Linux is an interesting little distribution. It's based on Ubuntu, and it uses a lot less resources than any other Ubuntu flavor that I know of. Even XFCE and LXQ are going to use more than what this does, and if you're into weird distros, this is definitely something that you should try. Uh, I don't think that any of it's necessarily bad. Now, some of the themes were out there. <laughs> uh, definitely not something that I would care for. But if you're into that kind of aesthetic that is just kind of odd, and I mean, a lot of people are. A lot of people don't like the traditional stuff, so they gravitate towards the more eclectic themes that are available for Linux. So, and this definitely has quite a few of those. And in terms of functionality and stuff, it's a really nice Linux desktop. The way the menus works and the way stuff drags around and stuff reminds me a lot of Openbox or other floating window managers. And this only takes a little bit of looking at the surface to know that there's just tons of stuff that you can do with Bodhi that is different than what you could do with other things. Now, it might just be that those things are called different things, but you manage the bars and panels in different ways. You can add modules and gadgets and stuff to your desktop. So that's really cool. Personally, I wouldn't see a reason to use this outside of a laptop or something that has low resources, but that's just, like I said, that's personally, uh, I'd prefer to use a window manager or something like that if I was looking for something low resources that I didn't really uh, that I wanted to theme and stuff. But if you're uh, a, a Linux user who wants to use an actual desktop environment who needs low resource, uh, uh, or a desktop environment that uses low resources, this is definitely something that you could try. So uh, thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Uh, early access to videos should happen uh, better this week than they did last week because they didn't happen at all last week. So before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Maglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.